Okay, so this is my uh, assessment from class. I'm going to go ahead and do it and share it with everyone. Uh, I have my computer right here so that I can put in my numbers at the end. I'll show you that calculation. Switch over to that. So here I have an airplane with a landing speed of 70 meters per second. So let's, it's not always nice to draw a little picture. helps you visualize what's going on. So here's my plane. And it's going with V1 initial velocity. I'll write that as a scalar value equals 70 meters per second. And then it's going to go travel all the way over here until it stops. And then V2 equals 0 meters per second. And this distance is 205 meters. So when you do this, it kind of helps you visualize what things you're given and helps you organize the problem. Now the first question says, what's the average speed? So I'll just write V average equals. And then the second says how long it takes to stop and what is the acceleration. Let's just do the first part. Since uh, it, it doesn't even matter if it's a constant acceleration, the average speed is defined as, uh, actually that's not true. If it is a constant acceleration, the average speed is V1 plus V2 over 2. You can literally just average them. So this is going to be 70 meters per second plus 0 meters per second divided by 2, and that's 35 meters per second. See, I didn't even need to use my calculator. That's it. Okay, what was, how long did it take to stop? Now I can use my other definition for average velocity. V average is delta x over delta t. So I know the V average, I just calculated that. I know delta x is 205. So if I multiply both sides by delta t and divide both sides by V average, I get delta t equals delta x over v average. So this is going to be 205 divided by 30, 205 meters, 35 meters per second. And so let's just, let's just print that out real quick. Um, I won't even do it the right way. Let's see. 205 divided by 35. I get 5.857 seconds. So how many how many decimal places could you should you carry? I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter. If I went back and did this, you could do significant figures, but it doesn't really matter. I could say, I'd probably say uh, 5.86 seconds, but I'd already written down the five, so I, I didn't want to round up. Okay, what was the average acceleration? So here I can say A is the change in velocity over the change in time. I have the change in velocity v2 minus v1. I have the change in time, so all I have to do is put it in. So I'm going to say uh, v2, let's just put in my values, of 0 minus 70 over 5.86 equals, uh, let's just, I should do this the long way, but I'm not. I'm not even going to show you this because it's not even that cool. So it's negative 70 divided by 5.86 I need to print that, sorry. And I get negative 11.95 meters per second squared. This is meters per second divided by seconds gives you meters per second squared. Now there is one other way you could do this. There's that kinematic equation, uh, x2 equals x1 plus vx1t plus one half a t squared. You could use that, okay, to solve for the acceleration. Uh, you're gonna get the same thing. Uh, here the time is 5.86. Here my change in x is 205. Here my initial velocity is 70. Okay, but in this case, it's easier just to say, uh, use the, the values that we already found. Okay, there you go. I'm not gonna show you the computer because there wasn't really anything in, in there that was useful.